Ambitious science fiction? Yes. Visionary? Maybe. But temper your expectations. Welcome to FF Plus, your outlet for reviews that are simple, short, and spoiler-free. I'm your host, Aaron White, and we like to get right on into it for you here at Feelin' Film, so that's what we're going to do. This film is called The Creator, and it comes to us from 20th Century Studios. It stars John David Washington, Jimmy Chan, Ken Watanabe, Sturgill Simpson, and Allison Janney. It is directed by Gareth Edwards, and it is written by Gareth Edwards and Chris Weitz. Cinematography is by Greg Frazier and Oren Soffer. It is edited by Hank Corwin, Joe Walker, and Scott Morris. And music is by Hans Zimmer. It runs 133 minutes and is rated PG-13 for violence, some bloody images, and strong language. What's it about? Against the backdrop of a war between humans and robots with artificial intelligence, a former soldier finds the secret weapon, a robot in the form of a young child. Now, the epic scale and overall sci-fi aesthetic of this world that Gareth Edwards has created are wonderful. Definite highlights and strengths of this particular movie. When it comes to being original, which many people will call this, I have to push back because there are so many things in this story that feel like direct copies of Star Wars, but reskin. There's essentially a Death Star that is tracking down rebel bases and destroying them with a massive energy burst type weapon. Missiles, in this case, nuclear. There's an AT-AT There's a version of a military at that. And then there's a version of the force that is used by the child. That's the power that this robot weapon has. And so I hesitate to call it original because, yes, it's taking those elements and it's putting them in context of an American versus new Asian war. But really, it's freaking Star Wars. The visual design of the robots, really cool. Both the old school versions that look like a traditional robot and then also the ones that are called simulants, which are what you've probably seen in the trailer and in images for this movie. They are robots, but they have humanoid face coverings. And then they have like this strange circular kind of hole where their ear would be. And that is very interesting and eye-catching. There are also some other robot designs in this that I found to be really intriguing. There's one in particular that's a suicide bomber robot. It definitely has some sort of intelligence in it. And that's a lot of fun to see play out and interesting. Raises some intriguing questions. The American military and various technologies that are on display in this futuristic world bring about some really explosive action. It's a lot of fun to watch. Big, bombastic combat that feels heavy and has the weight of loss. And Gareth Edwards does a really good job of crafting that and putting it throughout his film in order to keep it pretty fairly well-paced, I would say. And the visual effects overall are just really tremendous. This is the movie that costs less than $100 million. And once again, when you see something like this, it begs the question of why... Marvel and DC and all these other big blockbusters like Fast X are spending 200 plus million dollars to have absolutely atrocious and obviously bad CGI when someone like Gareth Edwards can come along and make this movie for 80-ish million dollars and it looks a hundred times better and like a more real lived-in world than those ever, ever, ever had. So that is a truly spectacular accomplishment and something worth seeing this and praising it for. And then the score from Hans Zimmer and the sound design. When have those things ever not been great in a movie that he's attached to? Right, exactly. There is not an answer for that because they haven't. They've always been amazing. And it is likewise 
here too. AI was created and at some point launched a nuke against Los Angeles, destroying it. So now humans are seeking revenge and most of the AI has kind of holed up in this area now called New Asia. They have various rebel bases hidden and scattered throughout. There is a mysterious creator of the AI called Nimrata that the Americans are trying to find and kill, as well as they are trying to take out the new robot weapon that the AI have created and plan to use against them. The protagonist is played by John David Washington. His name is Sergeant Joshua Taylor, and he is undercover as an agent of the Americans who is living with some of the AI and trying to track down this robot weapon. But things quickly go bad for him. There is an attack, and he sets forth spending most of the movie on a mission reluctantly assisting the American military for a second time, only because he wants to find out if his wife, who he believes to be dead, is actually still alive. Now, he eventually links up with this child that is presumed to be the weapon of the AI. And the child possesses unique and wide-ranging power to control all electronics, which is obviously something that could be devastating to a military dependent on them. It becomes a story about will Sergeant Taylor go through with bringing the child in? Will he turn native and become someone who fights for the AI? Where is his allegiance going to lie? Will he find his wife alive? Or was that a misdirection? Those are some of the questions that have to be answered here. The movie is full of really interesting ideas about this relationship between humans and AI, at least on the surface. Problem is, it never dives deeper into that in any meaningful way. I have seen others throw out the word profound about this film, and I simply do not understand where they're coming to that conclusion because the movie has nothing new and nothing powerful to say about our relationship with AI. And the script is straight up full of cringeworthy dialogue that makes you roll your eyes on a frequent basis and takes you out of those bigger, more philosophical type of story beats. It also plays very fast and loose with its own science, sometimes not following its own rules. I'll give you some examples that frustrated me. Hardly anything is explained. We never know anything about why the AI attacked the Americans in Los Angeles. But we are meant to feel as if the U.S. is the bad guy. Allison Janney here is almost like a mustache-twirling villain. They act what would be considered inhumanely against the artificial intelligence. They don't believe them to be real people, and so they don't treat them as such. And even though their whole goal is to prevent another attack from ever happening. So you could think of it as something like 9-11, where this major event happened, and now they're trying to take out who they seem to believe is responsible, but are they actually ever going to do that? Are they ever going to be able to prevent it? The thing that is missing, again, is the reasoning. We don't know why it happened or how it happened, and thus it's hard to pick a side. Because for me, I needed to know that the Americans were wrong. But I don't know. For all I know, the AI that launched the attack is the same AI that are holding up and being the rebels now that they're trying to hunt down. And if that was the case, my allegiance potentially changes and how I view this entire story may change. We also never know why the AI is designed the way they are. They have that weird circle in the back of their head like I talked about, and it looks really cool, but there's no explanation for why this would be the case. And really just kind of shortcuts any sort of deeper understanding of technology. At one point, one of the characters is examining the child, trying to figure out why the child is different. And all we see is a shot of this character with like a, a little like pinpoint tool. And he's like poking around in the circle, like sticking it 
in there and he goes, oh yeah. And he just spouts off all of these ways in which this child is more powerful and different simply by looking at the circle spinning. Like that's all we see him do. He doesn't plug into anything. There's no sort of evaluation. It's just a physical act of looking at the circle and going, oh, this thing is more powerful than I've ever seen. I think that the movie kind of is way too surface level in that way. It wants to be deeper and then it fails to do that with its script. So it just feels kind of lazy. There's another example of uh, at one moment where there's a transfer of consciousness that can happen via a data chip. And the characters specifically call out the fact that you only get like 30 seconds and you got to do it really, really quick in order to be able to utilize this and get a benefit from it. But then later in the movie, when it's convenient, it happens again and completely breaks that rule. I just don't enjoy when a movie does that. And then there's the problem of surviving multiple explosions. My buddy and I were watching this movie and talking about like, take a shot every time John David Washington doesn't die. And you could get really wasted doing that. Specifically, there's a point early in the film that he survives an explosion. And later on, he goes back to visit this same location. But the location is experiencing what is put forth to us as probably nuclear winter. So he has to wear a suit. He can't breathe outside in the air. Listen, if that location was hit by a nuclear attack and he was hundreds of feet away from ground zero to the point where he's blown backwards during the blast, but he survives it perfectly and then yet comes back and can't even breathe there without a suit. It doesn't make any sense. He wouldn't have ever survived this attack at the first place because it would have devastated that location if it's still resulting in that sort of long-lasting sort of nuclear effect to it. And so I just, those type of small things are the ones that really took me out of this movie completely. And then on top of that, emotionally, I just didn't, have the connection between Sergeant Taylor and the child that I think the movie wants me to have. It's somewhat effective, and there's a beautiful sweeping score behind it that is telling me via the music that I'm supposed to really care about this relationship. But what is it really saying about being human? Anything at all? Does Joshua care about AI in general? Or does he just care about the ones that he has a personal connection to? Because really outside of him, no other humans show a lick of change throughout this story. There's no broader context of how the world is being affected by this war. The movie is plenty entertaining and it, and it will hold your attention. So it's not a complete disaster. It's enjoyable. I'm just let down because there's such a much better experience in there. This is such a cool sci-fi world that could say something about evolution and humanity's ability to coexist with artificial intelligence. And there should be a debate about whether or not we should do that. There sh shouldn't be a foregone conclusion. And then the movie just ends. That's another problem I have with it is that there's no resolution whatsoever to the larger conflict or the issues at hand in the world. It's just kind of over. And I giggled because I was waiting for something to happen. Like, is there going to be a post credit scene that explains where the world goes from here? Maybe this was intentionally done so they could create the need for a sequel. That's what Hollywood likes to do. But it left me very wanting, I can tell you that. Performance-wise, I also am sad to say that I think John David Washington may not have it as a blockbuster actor. I have wanted him to be that. I have believed that he could do it. But after this and Tenet, and, and I will admit that partially that's probably related to script problems, especially here, less so in Tenet, but especially here. I just don't know that he has the chops, the charisma, and the presence like we just talked about with Glenn Powell, who does have that in Hitman, John David Washington doesn't present that in this movie at all. He is just not on the same level as his father, and I think maybe we need to stop trying to push him this direction. 
He's fantastic in something more like a drama. And I really enjoy him in those roles. And, and I hate to see him get pushed into this world of action star that he just doesn't quite work for me. When it comes to Janie, I don't know what's going on with the casting here. She's delightful and deranged and completely out of place as the attack force leader. It's so stupid, honestly. Like, I don't know why she is in this movie. She doesn't feel like she belongs. But I couldn't help but be captivated by her because of that. I love it. And, you know, it, honestly, if the film had leaned more into its comedic over-the-top tone than trying to play it all super serious without giving us any detailed information uh, or any deeper exploration of its ideas, then she'd have been perfect for that movie. Everyone else is fine. They do their jobs serviceably well and make the film go. I wanted to love the creator. I looked forward to this big time. I am a sci-fi junkie, and I think that it's well worth seeing on a big screen. It's that visually arresting, but I just need more. I have seen so many films of this kind. You've got to bring something to the table if you want to be special. You can just say humans versus AI and call it great. There's got to be an exploration of that and a reasoning behind motivations for characters and motivations for nations and what is happening on both sides and what the implications for the future are if X or Y ends up being the result, none of that happens here. And it's just a real bummer. The creator will be in theaters on September the 29th, and you can check it out for yourself and form your own opinion. Let me know if you agree. Let me know if you disagree. I love to hear from you. You can find me and all of my social media channels. Links to those are in the show notes to each and every episode. Thank you as always for listening, watching. Please like, subscribe, and share the podcast. Leave us a review if you're so inclined. Those help us out a lot and make us very, very grateful. I'll be back soon. Until then, keep watching and keep feeling. <laughs>